and let's pick it up going to the book the clay pigeons of st. Lo here we go sharp ballistic cracks pounded his eardrums so rapidly they seemed like one impossibly prolonged rifle shot he was instantly paralyzed with overwhelming fright the radio operator Jimmy slumped forward at his feet another man stumbled past to fall into the ditch ahead and Newcomb cleared the eight-foot hedgerow apparently with one jump but the major was too shocked to move his stomach knotted itself into a tight ball it jammed against his pounding heart while his breath stopped completely for an instant then came in jerky gasps the hair on his head felt as if it were rising like the hair on a cat's back his skin prickled all over but the most awful thing was the cold empty feeling in his guts the burst of German machine gun fire lasted only seconds, but it seemed like a lifetime before he could reach up and snatch a grenade from his pistol belt. He'd never heard a bullet crack by, inches from his head. He didn't know they sounded like that. He thought there was a German with a burp pistol behind the nearest tree on top of a hedgerow. He grabbed the pin on the grenade, but before he could throw it, something made him stop and yell, Anybody on the other side? He got a quick answer, Hell yes! Before he could lower his arm, the blast of a rifle right in his lap made him flinch. He squirmed back even closer against the hedgerow as Martin and Grimsell went into action. They'd been at the front all 11 days since a continuous line had been established in Normandy. The crack of bullets was nothing new to them. Almost side by side, lying flat in the ditch, they fired methodically across him and over Jimmy's head. Mechanically, he checked the pin in the grenade, then, still a little dazed, hooked it back onto his belt harness. He looked at the man who had fallen in the ditch and now was trying to weakly push himself up. It was Lieutenant Sadler, his face already greenish gray with shock. He had been hit five or six times in the head, chest, and both arms. Major Johns knew instinctively that Sadler was as good as dead. He called to him to lie still and take it easy, but the Charlie Company commander was already beyond hearing. Johns felt that he ought to do something constructive, something to get their minds off the tragedy that had just struck. But it was without inspiration, merely numb. Hey, you guys, yelled Grimsel, let's scram out of here. That brought the commander out of the days he had been in ever since the deafening burst of enemy fire perhaps two minutes before. He leaned forward and shook Jimmy's shoulder. Come on, Jim. It's all over now. You can get up. But Jimmy didn't move. Major Johns shook him again. Then he saw blood oozing slowly, thickly, brightly across his own shoe. Gently, he pulled at Jimmy's far shoulder. A neat, clean little bullet hole in the boy's helmet came into view so the major knew that Jimmy was dead something impelled him to pull Jimmy over until he could look into his face the eyes were closed and an odd little half smile made Jimmy look as if he were asleep dreaming pleasant dreams slowly the major lowered him back to the ground and for a fleeting instant Watch Jimmy's lifeblood continue to flow across his shoe. So that's his really his first experience in combat. And you can see obviously it's it's a hell of a wake-up call 